Come, all you weary and hurting, here find rest for your souls. Here enter the grace of forgiveness. Here taste the living water of renewal. Come from the busy weeks and anxious worry. Find here stillness, like being led to green pastures. Music that lifts you to the heavens, prayers that ease the wrinkles from your soul. Come and worship God, our maker, our defender, our guide. Greetings, sisters and brothers, and welcome to the Fellowship of Rocky River Presbyterian Church in Rocky River, Ohio. I'm John Fancher, the pastor of the church, and I'm so glad that you're here as the power of God's Holy Spirit draws us together through time and space so that we can be in worship. Won't you pray with me? Righteous God, we have all sinned and fallen short of your glory. We confess that we have not loved you with all our heart and strength. We've not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For Jesus' sake, grant us pardon and release. Give us time and conviction to amend our lives. Bless us with sustaining presence of your Holy Spirit. Amen. And friend, hear, hear these words of assurance. Neither this world nor our lives are so broken that God cannot restore them to wholeness. Trust and believe that after separation, reconciliation is possible. God does show us the way home. And so in the name of Christ Jesus, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Now let me share with you two passages of Scripture. The first comes from the opening chapter of the letter to the Ephesians. All things are done according to God's plan and decision, and God chose us to be His own people in union with Christ because of His own purpose, based on what He had decided from the very beginning. Let us, then, who were the first to hope in Christ, praise God's glory. And you also became God's people when you heard the true message, the good news that brought your salvation. You believed in Christ, and God put his stamp of ownership on you by giving you the Holy Spirit he had promised. The Spirit is the guarantee that we shall receive what God has promised his people. And this assures us that God will give complete freedom to those who are His. And so let us praise God's glory. That's from Ephesians chapter 1. And then from the Gospel of Mark chapter 1, after John the Baptist was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee announcing God's good news, saying, now is the time. Here comes God's kingdom. Change your hearts and lives and trust this good news. Well, as Jesus passed alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon and Andrew, throwing fishing nets into the sea, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I'll show you how to fish for people. Right away, they left their nets and followed him. After going a little farther, Jesus saw James and John, Zebedee's sons. They were in their boat repairing their fishing nets. At that very moment, he called to them, and they followed him, leaving their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired workers. I know that uh, professional football teams give themselves 24 hours, they say, to bask in victory before turning their attention to their next opponent. But I'm still thinking about last Sunday's inspiring performance by our Cleveland Browns. The Browns, at one point in the game, took over the ball after stopping the Bengals on fourth down. And then Browns wide receiver Donovan Peoples-Jones gathered in a 60-yard pass launched by quarterback Baker Mayfield. 
In full stride, Peoples-Jones gathered the ball in over his left shoulder and ran the final 10 yards to cross the goal line. Eggs, legs, eyes, arms, hands, feet, they were all, all perfectly attuned to bringing that play to fruition. Donovan Peoples-Jones saw it, he reached for it, he gathered it in, and he completely engulfed it so that it could never get away. Well, did you ever think that the Cleveland Browns could teach us a lesson in living the Christian life? Who would have thought that the play of the Browns would show us how to respond to the gospel? You see, we're supposed to receive the gospel, the good news of God's unconditional and unstoppable love. We're supposed to receive it the way Donovan Peoples-Jones received that football. He grasped the ball and pulled it close, wrapping himself around it so tightly that he and the ball were unshakable. And when we hear the gospel message... We need to grasp it, to take it in, to engulf it so completely that it cannot be taken from us and we cannot be separated from it. But that's not the way we tend to treat the good news of God's saving love. We don't engulf it completely, no. We tend to be part-time Christians to some degree. What does a part-time Christian look like? Well, let's start off with this. Yes, this global pandemic has changed our habits in many ways. Of course, illness or the risk of it has kept some people from public settings like gathering for worship. And there are some people who are homebound because of mobility issues or other things. But there are quite a few able-bodied persons who claim membership in a church but you wouldn't know it from their lack of participation in the life of their church. Part-time Christians, well, a part-time Christian always has time to eat, but rarely takes the time to return thanks before eating. Part-time Christians always find the money to remodel or to redecorate, to go out on the town or to go out of town but can't seem to spare anything when their church makes an appeal for a, a building drive, a mission project, an education program. Part-time Christians cherish the, Christ, the Christmas sentiment of peace on earth, goodwill to all. But when an international crisis arises, they assume that a military response of force is the only alternative. Part-time Christians are the kinds who claim that they have respect for all God's people, but they don't see a problem with adults viewing pornography which exploits women and men and children. You know, it's interesting that some can only dabble at being a follower of Jesus, but they can immerse themselves completely in, oh, Buckeye football, their fine arts group, their golf league, their wine club. But Jesus calls to us. He calls us to surrender our lives, our whole lives, to hand them over to the one to whom they really belong. We need to give our lives to the one whose property they were in the first place. Let's look at the example presented in Mark's gospel. When Jesus went to the Galilee region proclaiming that God's kingdom had come near, Simon and Andrew came into his view and Jesus saw them casting a net into the sea. Mark adds, for they were fishermen. Seems obvious to us because we've heard the story dozens of times, but the significance of that phrase, for they were fishermen, it becomes apparent only after Jesus then says, follow me and I will make you fish for people. For Mark reports, immediately they left their nets and followed Jesus. Now because Mark has told us that they are fishermen and not farmers or butchers out on a little fishing trip, we realize, oh my goodness, these men walked away from their occupation, from their livelihood, 
in order to serve Jesus. Right after that, Mark tells us that Jesus came across James and John, sons of a man named Zebedee. Like Simon and Andrew, James and John were commercial fishermen. We know that because Mark tells us that they were in their boat mending their nets. When Jesus called to them to come with him, Mark tells us that James and John, quote, left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed Jesus. My goodness, we think to ourselves. James and John gave up the comfort, the security of their family in order to follow Jesus. And let's not forget the very first person mentioned in today's gospel lesson, John the Baptist. Now, what did he walk away from? What did he give up? Just his freedom, his occupation. Now, of course, John the Baptist wasn't following Jesus. Quite the opposite was true. He was clearing the way for Jesus. But John's life was committed to serving God, announcing the fulfillment of God's promise of sending a Savior. And to do that, John the Baptist surrendered whatever else he would have done, eventually surrendered, sacrificed his life. Now, I believe that Mark's gospel is pleading with its readers to do more than dabble with the knowledge of the good news of Jesus. The gospel, it isn't a hobby to be taken out of the closet when we're feeling nostalgic. The gospel isn't an analgesic to be consumed only when we're feeling pain. The gospel is to be embraced with everything we bring to our lives. If we embrace the gospel completely, who we are and what we do in our work will illustrate the unconditional love of God because our behavior, our actions will contribute to the common good that will build up human dignity and self-worth. If we embrace the gospel completely, the values we hold will reflect our awareness of God's love for us and love for all people. So then we'll stand up for justice and we'll speak out against behaviors and attitudes that try to build up some people at the expense of others. And if we embrace the gospel completely, the way we use the wealth and resources that come our way will illuminate the gospel of God's saving love for all people. That means we will show respect for God's creation by being good stewards of the earth's resources. It means we will gain pleasure from being joyfully generous with whatever possessions and treasures might come our way. And if we embrace the gospel completely, worship and praise and prayer won't be optional diversions for those occasions when we feel we can spare the time and we're in the right mood because we will crave the time and the treasure of that intimate connection with God. You need to give your life in response to God's giving us the life of Jesus Christ. What you think, how you treat people, what you do, what you buy, what you say, where you go, if you realize that the gospel message of God's unconditional and unmerited love is for you, it's not enough then to be a partial Presbyterian, a conditional Christian. Surrender your life to the power of the gospel. For when the gospel is embraced, it changes lives. If a football player holds the football at arm's length like he's afraid it's going to bite him, he's probably not going to hold on to it long enough to get across the goal line. When you hold the saving love of Jesus Christ at arm's length, you cannot experience its life-giving warmth any more than you can feel the warmth of a fireplace by standing outside looking through a picture window. So don't stay on the outside looking in. In Jesus Christ, God is trying to persuade you, to convince you, to entice you, to invite you to accept the truth. And the truth is, that God loves you without any preconditions, without you having to do anything to warrant or earn that love. That offer is just hanging out there waiting for you to say, Yes, Lord. 
The answer to a life that feels filled by frustration and futility. The answer to a life that feels adrift and without purpose. The answer is to say, I'm done acting like a part-time Christian. Receive and embrace God's saving love, love made visible in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Master and friend. Amen. Well, friends, in this community of faith, in this church, we care for and pray for one another and for the world. And each week, we select at random some members of this church to be in our prayer focus. And this week, our prayer focus includes Jamie and Mike, and their daughters, Emma and Olivia. It includes Beth and Paul, and their children, Conrad, Carly, and Kira. It includes Dave and Dana, and their son, Blake, and Katrina. And among the prayer requests that you have called or written and sent in, we offer prayers of joy for the safe arrival of baby Marshall to Emily and Luke. Prayers of thanks for Annette's successful procedure. We pray for Laura in her time of discernment. We pray for protection and strength for Parker as he fights an addiction. We pray for Sherry as she seeks stability in her life. And we offer prayers for strength and comfort and healing for Lewis and Janice and Carol. Would you join me in a spirit of prayer? Majestic God, on holy days and holidays and ordinary days, may we praise you through Jesus Christ. When we are raring to go and when we're worn to a frazzle, May we know that you long to be our guide. When our confidence shines through and when anxiety clouds our vision, may we trust in your unshakable presence. For too often, God, we forget you. We forget your constant presence. We forget your promise to support and comfort us. We forget to praise you for your unequaled power of creation. But in this time of worship, we do remember. We pray that this hour will inspire us for the rest of this day, for the week ahead, will inspire us to gather again in a week's time to worship you, to lay our hearts before you in confession and in praise. Patient, accepting God, help us to remember you outside this moment of worship. We pray that we may trust, obey, show courage and faith with Jesus as our example. And so to you we pray all this and more besides through the power of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, friends, thank you for being part of this worship experience. You are the reason that we're here to inspire and comfort and encourage you in your life's calling to be an ambassador of Jesus Christ. If you have comments or reactions or suggestions to this worship time, please uh, reach out and contact us. We'd love to hear from you. We also welcome your prayer requests whether you want to uh, send them in, give us a phone call, drop us a message, uh, please, you can feel free to share as much or as little detail as you like. And please let me know if you'd like me to share it in worship or if you'd like me to hold that prayer request in pastoral confidence. Your financial gifts and offerings continue to support our charitable mission outreach efforts in our ministry. I thank you for that. You can bring gifts to the church, you can drop them in the mail, you can use your bank's bill pay program, or you can make gifts through our church's website. 
And I invite you to join with many other members and friends of this church by making a commitment of financial support for our ministry and mission in the year ahead. Many are dropping off or mailing to the church a stewardship pledge form for 2022. You can explore this means of charitable giving by going to our website and clicking on the tab labeled 2022 Stewardship. Our website is www.riverpress.org. You'll find new broadcasts posted on our Facebook page and on our YouTube channel. They're posted every Saturday at 5.30 p.m. They're there for you to watch at your convenience anytime after that. In addition to these worship broadcasts, we also offer in-person worship services in our sanctuary Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. At this time, we ask anyone who is not fully vaccinated to be masked, but we encourage everyone to wear masks while in the church. And now, friends, hear these words of benediction. May the hands of God hold you in your weakness. May the arms of God comfort you in your sorrow. May the hands of God release you in your strength. May the arms of God embrace you in your joy. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, guide you, guard you, and strengthen you today and forever. Amen.